Hello, everyone, and welcome to Armstrong in the Loop podcast. I'm your host, Seth Prentice. And today I'm joined by Deb Ferguson, Program Manager for Glade Run Epic Psychiatric Rehabilitation Services. Deb, welcome to the show. Good morning, Seth. I'm glad to be here. Deb, that was a heck of a title, and I'm glad that I can shorten it up a little bit. But uh, before we get to your exciting project that you and your patients have been working on, can you talk to us about what is the Epic Center? Sure. Um, the Epic Center, um, we are connected with Blade Run Lutheran Services, like you said. And the Epic Center is a psychiatric rehabilitation program. Um, the Epic stands for Empowering People in Communities. So those who know about the psychiatric rehabilitation model understand that our goal is to work with adults um, who have a serious and persistent mental health diagnosis. Our goal is to provide support and skill development with them so that they can regain those losses in functioning um, that they have experienced because of their acute and chronic mental health diagnosis. Where are your services located? We actually have two facilities uh, at Glade Run. We have one in Butler County, which is located in downtown on West Newcastle Street. And we also just recently opened up our second site in Beaver County, and we're located in downtown Rochester on South Park Street. Awesome. Uh, you know, I'm guessing your program is a refer referral-based program, correct? Yes, we, consumers are referred to us most frequently by inpatient facilities if they're in the hospital or if they're being discharged from an LTSR, which is a long-term structured residence or the state hospital. But we also get referrals from outpatient therapists, from um, blended case managers, from physician's assistance offices, um, PCPs, any licensed practitioner can refer an adult to our program for that additional support and skill development. And your uh, Butler location, I'm sure, has been there a lot longer than your Beaver location as you recently opened the doors to Beaver this past year, correct? Yes, our Beaver, lo Beaver County location, we had our grand opening the middle of February of this year. So our program in Beaver County has been up and running for about four or five months now. Our program in Butler County has been up and running for about four years now. Wow. With having a program as successful as you already have in Butler County, how has the transition been to start this in a new location in Beaver County? Well, we're, ve we're very excited about being in Beaver County. Um, we graciously accepted the request from the Beaver County um, Behavioral Health Services to come into the county and bring our services here. So we have been providing mobile psych rehab program services in Beaver County for over a year now. And we just started our site-based program in February to add to that service delivery to to better accommodate the needs of folks in the county. You and I spoke uh, recently before doing the podcast and you know a question that I had for you then and I would like to ask it again now is what is a true success you know for some of your patients as I'm, I'm sure going through this program you've seen people have success stories. Uh, could you share one or any of those with our listeners? Oh definitely. Successes in psych rehab are measured by the consumer um, through their lens because we work with consumers who have serious persistent mental health issues. So they come in and they're the ones that are setting their goals. So we have to meet them where they are. So successes may involve somebody learning how to use coping skills effectively to keep themselves safe and stay out of the hospital. Successes can be defined as somebody learning the skills so that they can move out independently and live on their own in the community. Successes can be somebody learning how to manage their daily symptoms, their responsibilities, so that they can also get a job, keep that job, and work um, and contribute back to the community. So successes really have a wide range depending upon that consumer and what 
their level of functioning is or their level of impairment is whenever they come into our program. Fantastic. And I want to talk about another success, and I'm sure our listeners will be excited to learn that you've been able to start an urban garden project at your Beaver County location. Can you talk to us more about it? Sure. Uh, during one of the groups that my staff runs with the consumers here, it was actually one of their cooking and healthy living topics that they were working on. Um, because we do a lot of education and we do a lot of hands-on skill development and some of that and some of the most popular activities are folks learning how to cook, um, finding some enjoyment in that. And so they were talking about how they could prepare healthier foods. So we partnered with Julie Wallmeyer from our adventures department at Glade Run and she was able to give us some plants. So we have some tomato plants, some squash, some peppers. I think there's some herbs out there. Um, and we put together an urban garden and sort of some uh, raised planter boxes per se um, in our parking lot over here in Rochester. So it was a really nice activity that the consumers all worked together. They were able to plan what we needed. They helped in planting the, the, uh, the plants. They water them when they need water and they need a, water, a lot of water the last couple of days because it's been very, very hot. Um, and then their goal will be is as the, the plants start to produce the, uh, the foods, then they'll use those foods in skill groups, um, in the cooking groups, learning how to prepare those. Um, and these foods are a lot healthier than the processed foods that you're going to get going through the drive through or the frozen meals, which really can help our consumers improve their, their physical health because we know that physical and mental health are very well connected. So anything we could do to help them support overall health is really a benefit to them. So, and also a lot of these foods are foods that folks are now starting to get from some of the food banks. Um, from the farm markets because, you know, we're going into that time. So some folks don't know how to cook these foods. A lot of folks, whether you're in these services or not, they don't know how to cook some of these great fresh fruits and vegetables. So this helps to teach them how to do that and to use those resources that a lot of our folks often have to rely on because um, the severity of their illness makes a lot of them dependent upon some of the uh, social security disability incomes or the assistance um, because they're not, a lot of folks aren't able to work a full-time job because of the severity of their mental health diagnosis. Is there a goal in place to actually take the project from being at the location and hopefully that they can transport it and do, do it at their own location at their house or wherever they might be at, living at? That is always the goal of Psych Rehab, Seth. Our purpose is to help folks come into our program, give them support, teach them the skills that they need to achieve the goals that they're working on, and then help them to practice those goals and then transfer those goals back into their own natural environment. So whether that be their home, their communities, their churches, their employment. So folks, we don't want folks to be in Psych Rehab forever. It should be um, a short-term intervention where we can provide support, skill development, and help them transfer those skills back so that they can go and live their life. That's amazing. Are there plans to continue doing this after this year and maybe expanding and growing the urban garden? Oh, I would love to repeat this again. I think it's a great opportunity um, to you know, be again, to be able just to have those resources. So I definitely, you know, think, that especially in our Rochester office, because of the facility and the space that we have here, we can easily do that here, that we, will, we would continue to do that. And I'd like to try some different vegetables um, and different types of, of fruits in the future as well. Are there resources that those in the community could help and donate uh, to this cause to help expand it for future years? Um, well, you know, like I said, we had partnered with Juliet Adventures um, and our Adventures program on campus that is a wonderful program that they do activities with the horses, but they also have the, the plants and the greenhouse. So using partnering with Julie um, 
I'm sure that would be a good opportunity if folks had some plants or, or seeds or resources that they would want to donate um, because she really has the, the, the acreage there and the facilities to, to do the, the starting of those plants. So any donations like that would be welcome. Perfect. Uh, before we end today, Deb, is there anything that you would like to talk to talk to the listeners about that we might have accidentally skipped over or you just want to make sure that uh, we get your message out there? Uh, just that, you know, the, uh, being able to uh, work in a program like Epic and being able to help consumers and give them the opportunity to um, receive support receive the skill development to help them to be able to manage how they live daily with these chronic mental health symptoms. Um, the folks that we work with are truly very unique, special folks. Um, and it's being able to see them develop those skills and be able to go back, transfer those skills and be able to live satisfying, successful, lives while living daily with a serious mental illness is very rewarding for me personally um, because it can be done. Um, and there's folks that do it all the time. And there is a lot of need out there for folks. Um, I would want to encourage folks that, you know, if you have, if you're somebody who you're struggling yourself, or if you have a family member or a friend that you know is struggling and needs some additional support at whatever level of mental health, please, you know, reach out. There are resources out there in the community. Um, there are people out there that want to help folks and that people really don't need to suffer quietly um, with these mental health issues that people have done for so long. Um, really trying to combat the stigma of asking for help. You know, mental illness is just like any other physical illness that you would go to a doctor for. Um, so just helping folks work through that, um, because just because you have a mental illness or you're struggling with something doesn't mean that you are not a healthy, productive member of society. People are. Um, so just helping folks be able to reach that potential and give them the support that they need that they can do that. Deb, thank you so much, not only for being on the show today, but everything you and your staff does to help those in need on a daily basis. Well, thank you, Seth. I appreciate the opportunity to come on and talk about our, our Epic Psych Rehab programs at Glade Run. Um, this is one of the newer programs uh, that Glade Run has added to our, our spectrum of services. Um, and I personally am really excited about the, the work that we have been doing and will continue to do both in Beaver County and Butler County. And we'll put the contact information for EPIC in our episode notes for those wanting to find out more information. For Armstrong in the Loop podcast, I'm Seth Prentice, keeping you in the loop. Are you enjoying Armstrong in the Loop podcast? Great news. All past and current episodes are available on popular streaming apps and websites. Search Armstrong in the Loop podcast and subscribe today.